Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Force 10 from Navarone is a 1978 war film that's loosely based on Alastair MacLean's 1968 novel of the same name. It's a sequel to the 1971 film, The Guns of Navarone. The parts of Mallory and Miller are played by Robert Shaw, who actually died before this film was released, and Edward Fox, taking over the original roles that were played by Gregory Peck and David Niven. It was directed by Guy Hamilton, and it also stars Harrison Ford, Carl Weathers, Barbara Bach, Franco Nero, and Richard Kyle. The storyline goes that after successfully sabotaging radar-guided Nazi guns, Mallory, played by Robert Shaw, and Miller, played by Edward Fox, find themselves attached to an elite American unit that's known as Force 10. The unlikely duo must accompany Force 10's leader, Colonel Barnsby, played by Harrison Ford, and his men as they search for an escaped Nazi spy who only Mallory and Miller can identify. As the team travels behind enemy lines, Barnsby begins to fall for the rugged resistance fighter Maritza, played by Barbara Bach. Initially, there had been plans to produce this film shortly after the 1961 original with Gregory Peck and David Niven, reprising their roles. Following the success of the original film, producer Carl Foreman asked McLean to write a hardcover sequel novel on which a follow-up film could be based. But he was reluctant to write a novel on it. Instead, he just delivered a screen treatment of the subject. In April of 1967, Carl Foreman announced that he would make a movie called After Navarone, which starred Anthony Quinn, Gregory Peck, and David Nevin, reprising their key roles. The movie was to be made by Columbia Pictures, but in May of 1967, it was announced that the film would be called The High Dam, and filming would take place in 1969. Filming didn't proceed, though. Things held it up. McLean decided to develop the screen treatment into a book and call it Force 10 from Navarone, which was published in 1968 and became a great bestseller. Throughout the 70s, Foreman tried to get financial backing for the movie. In December 1972, McLean and Foreman had a plan to use the original cast, but after looking at it closely, they realized that they looked a little bit too old for the war now. By October of 1977, the main cast had been kind of settled on, with Robert Shaw, Edward Fox, and Harrison Ford, Franco De Niro, and Barbara Bach, to which Robert Shaw always stated, that he just felt like it was somewhat ridiculous for him at his age to be running around a mountain in Yugoslavia saying, let's go. It was Harrison Ford's first movie after the release of Star Wars. He said that he picked the part because it was a very strong supporting character that was very different from Han Solo, and he was trying to keep himself from being stereotyped as a science fiction type, but he felt like that he had to take advantage of the chance to work. He looked at it as a job, and he basically did it for the money. Now, the writer, McLean, was reportedly really unhappy with the prominence that was given to Barbara Bach's character. He felt like it was of minimal importance in the novel, but I think her character adds so much to this film. You don't know whether to drool over, which you do quite a bit, or hate her. She's a pretty tough cookie. Filming went on for five months, starting in late 1977. They used Shepperton Studios outside of London for most of the indoor scenes. 
including a full-scale mock-up of a Lancaster bomber. Scale models of the dam and the valley and the bridge were constructed at the Mediterranean Film Studio in Malta, with a good portion of the exterior shots being shot in Yugoslavia. There are numerous mentions in the movie about Mallory having an injured leg, and you see him walking with a cane at the beginning of the film. In actuality, Robert Shaw had injured his knee shortly before filming began, and he was having great difficulty walking without a limp. So they simply wrote that injury into the script. Also, while Shaw was there filming, he was attacked by a group of men that tried to rob him. This happened while he was kind of off on his own trying to read. He fought off the attackers and chased the rest with a machete that he had retrieved from his jeep. Although three producers of the film are deceased, Carl Foreman, Sidney Cohen, and Oliver Unger, their estates and surviving producer Peter Gettinger ended up suing Sony Pictures, who was Columbia Pictures' successor, for unpaid sums that they didn't receive from distribution rights to the movie. Following a May 2008 trial in New York Supreme Court, a judgment was awarded to the producers. More than 30 years of funds that had been withheld were ordered to be paid by the studio. Now, Barbara Bach plays a great role in this film. You don't know what to make of her. She's attractive, but yet so hard-nosed. You want to see her as beautiful, yet evil. And maybe that's kind of a fun mix. She specifically got this role because of her look. But the very next year, with all of the appeal that she got from this movie, she lost the role in Charlie's Angels to Shelley Hack. In a Johnny Carson interview in 1979, she states that she lost that audition strictly because they thought she looked too sophisticated in attitude and look and felt like that she didn't look American enough, even though she was born in Queens, New York. They even asked her manager if she could play American. That's kind of funny, because she is American. She does have a look to her face, though, that kind of has a European vibe to it. She went on to have about 28 films to her credit, and has done some pretty tantalizing pictorials in some of the popular magazines. Take a look at this film. I really like it. I think it's a good watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.